I would like to, yeah, participant, I would like to uh, introduce our next speaker and uh, Dr. Anandraj Sengani. And uh, Dr. Anandraj is currently serving as an assistant professor at RISC, Basaida University, from April 2021. He has obtained his PhD in 2018 from CSAR CCR at Karakuri, Tamil Nadu, India. Following that, which he worked with Professor Noda as a JSPS postdoctoral fellow from January 2019 to March 2021. Mm -hmm. He was the first ECS India section SK Rangarajan graduate student award winner of the year 2017, which was presented to him by the Electrochemical Society USA for his noteworthy works in the area of electric catalysis and materials electrochemistry during his PhD. He is an electrochemist by passion and teaching, as well as a researcher by profession. He places his interest on everything where there is a transfer of electrons mm -hmm. that results in the transformation mm -hmm. of matter, especially mm -hmm. at the electrode electrolyte interfaces. I think it may be a bit a uh, technical word of electrochemistry area, but uh, personally, I can say uh, that Ranandra is a very fascinated person and very, very high attitude researcher. Always happy to share his uh, knowledge to the community as well as to fellow, fellow colleagues. Uh, Dr. Anand is a very notable person in electrochemistry area and he published more than 75 research area in a high reputed journal. And of course, a uh, few of them he published in patent also. So with this note, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Anandraj. Uh, Anandraj, please be continue to stay this on your spot. Yeah, th thank you very much, um, Professor Sudhagar. Actually, the last part was uh, more apt about my introduction. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, if you could have started with the thing that you know of me very personally, it would have been very simpler and uh, much uh, broader about me in, uh, specifically in uh, research profile uh, visibility social networking and blogging is the blogging is the main thing about 90 percent of it because uh, that is the only way we can uh, make uh, that is one of the main ways we can make our uh, research profile visible to almost uh, everyone who are all uh, involved in this research field or uh, the other people the common people uh, in the society uh, since professor sudhagar has talked a lot about uh, social networking and blogging i will limit my content in that particular area and i will uh, try to highlight the things uh, which uh, he uh, may have missed mentioning with that uh, i would like to share my screen hope you all can see my screen so yeah this is what we are going to see today research profile visibility so how do we do that so that's the question of uh, this session's uh, talk and uh, i'm going to share my uh, personal opinion it is not that uh, there are there are a set of rules and uh, a set of terms and conditions which you must follow to make your research profile uh, visible to the maximum audience in research as well as to the general public so uh, I, I, it will be kind of uh, very uh, opinion opinionated uh, talk so if you have some contradictions or conflicting uh, Thoughts, you can always say it to me back and I'll, uh, I, I would love to listen to your uh, suggestions, comments and as well as uh, recommendations. So uh, in today's uh, talk, the overview is about getting an unique research profile uh, in all the platforms possible, creating and maintaining an up-to-date uh, web page. I'm very sure how to create a web page and uh, an attractive web page will be given by the next speaker. Blogging and social networking, which has been uh, uh, elaboratively talked by Professor Sudhagar. And there is finally outreaching and disseminating, in which he also mentioned uh, some of the key points uh, about how you can disseminate your research results and how you can uh, promote uh, your research among the general public and other things. So uh, basically, uh, social networking and blogging is an integral part of uh, making your research profile visible to uh, most of the audience. So uh, we will be seeing one by one uh, in the uh, context that are listed here. So why many research profiles? I, I heard a question from uh, the audience, which was read out by uh, Dr. Kumar Varanichami that uh, there are so many uh, research profiles, Google Scholar, PubLearn, Scopus, or CID research, there are so many. So which one should be uh, relied upon? So this was the question if I uh, remember it exactly. So the uh, thing is that uh, you, you cannot weigh uh, one uh, research profile or uh, a platform which gives you uh, a research profile against other because all of them have uh, their own uh, merits and demerits. For example, if you take uh, Google Scholar, which is uh, very commonly used for by all uh, stages of researchers 
just uh, from a phd scholar to uh, very senior professors and professors who have been who have recently retired all of them almost everyone has google scholar uh, unless if you are in a country where google and its products are banned even though i have friends from china they uh, are having a google scholar account uh, of course they could have created when they were abroad uh, during post doc or uh, doctoral studies but uh, it doesn't matter because google scholar is the one uh, most commonly used by many researchers but the problem with google scholar is that it indexes everything it does not uh, differentiate between your research article or the abstract you submitted somewhere else or uh, mentioning of your article in some online blogs or in some other uh, podcast in, in those cases it does not discriminate or differentiate it, it doesn't actually uh, see uh, what is a uh, research article or what um, what is uh, a blog and uh, what is Uh, something uh, said about by your research by someone else in a totally different uh, platform so it indexes everything and it also includes citation from all sources not only from research articles and uh, if you see the citation counts in your google scholar profile uh, it this count tends to be always overestimated then what is your real citation count since it is being used by most of the researcher and also regarded as one of the important way to assess one's uh, recent research activity based on the citation number h index and the number of articles you published all these things uh, are very easy with google scholar but thing is that if you have a common name very commonly used name for example i, I could remember an example of my uh, phd mentor uh, who was uh, dr supratha kundu who is dr supratha kundu sorry uh, he is still here so uh, he, this name supratha kundu is very common in west bengal and there are also so many researcher with the same name what happened was that uh, he did not uh, he, he was not aware that uh, all the papers which ever has uh, this uh, taxonomy yes kundu they were all being indexed under, under his uh, research profile i mean google scholar profile uh, one time in uh, 2018 i asked him how many paper is he published and he told me uh, something around 120 or 130 but when i checked his uh, google scholar profile it was showing more than 300 then i have alerted him that uh, it is also indexing others who are all having uh, the, the name with the taxonomy of s kundu so this is the main issue with uh, google scholar if you if you are having a common name very common name it can index everything from others so it is not uh, a source which can be relied upon at all the time of course if you maintain your google scholar profile up to date and uh, frequently check on it whether it is indexing other article or it is uh, indexing some other abstracts or it is uh, it is having uh, the same article two or three times there are so many issues with google scholar next comes uh, publens publens takes everything about you and your research activity from above science okay so it it does not uh, basically include anything from scopus uh, that means that uh, articles that you publish uh, in uh, scopus index journals like uh, mainly when you publish some articles in uh, elsevier when that particular uh, elsevier journal when that particular uh, elsevier journal is not indexed in uh, web of science so those article will not be included in your uh, publons profile automatically all you have to do that uh, is you need to do it manually and uh, the citation counts are uh, only taken from the above size uh, citation source so they, this particular profile will not count citation from uh, scopus uh, source and next we have uh, orc id so because people know that there are so many things uh, about research profile and there is nothing uh, common which does not discriminate researchers based on uh, number of citations or uh, the h index number uh, so it, it, it does not discriminate or say it basically does not discriminate one researcher from another based on citation number or uh, h index number what does it does is that it is uh, actually uh, uh, compact or, uh, uh, or a short cv of yours with full list of publications okay you can in this uh, category of research profile i mean with or say id you can uh, allow uh, thir- a third party for example crossref to index all your article whatever article you published and you don't have to add them manually to your ors id if you authorize uh, crossref once or meta uh, data search once uh, it will add all the articles you published to your ors id but again uh, the drawback 
the or side is that you you will not your profile will not show any citation number or hs index number they, they they people simply don't know uh, how much impact your articles has so far gained which google scholar publons and scopus can give and uh, also uh, there is scopus uh, usually scopus profiles uh, are uh, auto generated based on your uh, scopus uh, research article database and it, it usually does not uh, let you amend the documents or the citation number or whatever it is so uh, it is like a uh, non editable uh, data source so it, a scopus id is created when a researcher publish a paper and uh, that paper is uh, published in a journal which uh, which is indexed in scopus so that's how it works so to conclude you cannot have a single research profile uh, in order to uh, show us your uh, research activities and uh, how might uh, you are in the particular uh, research area so thing is you need to have as many as research profiles possible in order to make Uh, your research visible to more audience so that's the question, uh, answer to my question which was asked to professor sudagar bachemuthu and uh, next comes the personal web page of course research profile uh, is uh, is very important but personal web page is what the uh, oracle of all your uh, research profiles so where you can keep the links of all your research profiles provided by all the other uh, platforms like google scholar corpus populus and all the others in your personal web page and uh, here uh, it is your playground you, you can design it as you want so at your will so you can do anything uh, you want in your personal web page but you should remember one thing that since it is a web page which is going to be seen or visited very frequently by many researchers those who are in uh, different stages of their career from uh, senior professors and uh, scientists faculty members to some uh, students who is aspiring to join in your uh, group for a phd program so uh, you should keep something in mind that uh, your content your website content even though it is your page and you have all uh, all the independence you need to do whatever you want to do with your web page uh, you should uh, keep this thing in mind that it should be appealing and attractive to all the stages of researcher those who ever may visit your web page so and uh, second thing uh, uh, that is uh, good about uh, your personal web page is that you decide what you need to say about you because the research profiles what i have just introduced in the previous slides will not uh, let you uh, describe uh, you and your research works and uh, what you have achieved what are the highlights of your research uh achievements recently made all these things can never be done with any of the research profiles we can have from a third party like google scholar or others i have just introduced so this is the place where you can do all those things so when you do this thing uh, you should also keep in mind that keeping your personal web page up to date is more more important because uh, all those profiles they have auto update option but not your personal web page so when you design your personal web page it is very important that you keep them uh, up, you, you keep it up to date and i i don't want to uh, go deeper into personal web page because the next speaker will talk more about that and uh, so uh, i'll just simply introduce two aspects how should your home page appear and uh, what what else you can have in your drop down menu or a menu bar i have uh, taken the examples of uh, my own uh, personal web page and that of professor suga sudhakar pichamuthu pichamuthu uh, then you can see uh, there are uh, two different uh, home pages for a researcher to introduce uh, yourself uh, with a broader audience sudhakar so, uh, professor sudhakar pichamuthu is a uh, associate professor in harry edward university and uh, he is uh, having a group uh, and he is leading a group so it is something uh, he has to uh, show us in the very first page so if you see his uh, uh, profile here you see office address email and i'm sure he will update the phone and he will also update the uh, home page and in his previous website i saw that there are many things uh, like uh, the recent awards and other things the first page is what summarizes you or introduces you to others very briefly so in my case i i uh, do not want to 
put uh, many things in the first very first page itself because sometimes it may appear to people that uh, uh, we are showcasing uh, too much uh, like we are showing off so uh, you can just introduce in a very friendly manner in a very uh, brief uh, passage about uh, you who you are and what you are doing then you can have all the other items in your drop down menus so for an early career researcher so what you can do is when you don't have a research group to lead all that you can keep in your uh, website is that every uh, subsection of your detailed cv like uh, education and experience projects you have obtained publications in talks you have delivered and then uh, there is um, extra curricular activity and uh, your collaborations and if you do perform some outreaching or charity works and there is also uh, uh, this thing highlights uh, suppose if you were one of your article got mentioned by some uh, other medium or platform or a, a magazine you can keep all this thing in your drop down menu it is for an early career researcher but when you are a researcher who are uh, currently having a group it is very common because we all know that when we search for a postdoctoral position or a doctoral position we all see uh, this kind of website where a brief intro of the professor will be on the first page or sometimes it is uh, mostly uh, figures and stats about the whole group uh, which summarizes the overall activity of the group then there will be uh, personal cv of the group leader and then the group and the science they do and then the publication projects funding outreach and all the other thing and there will be alumnus uh, alumni and uh, contact details so this is how uh, your uh, web page should be uh, for a researcher okay so uh, i wanted to say one thing in in this um, aspect that uh, in my personal web page i wrote uh, something about uh, my research interest in one of my passages i i said that uh, when i understand something new in electrochemistry particularly in the uh, interface of electrode electrolyte in uh, uh, interactions i get a um, brain orgasm so i i, I literally wrote that uh, word in my personal web page you you, you would uh, you would be shocked if you come to know how it reaches very quickly quickly like wildfire uh, within uh, two months of writing this thing i have received uh, several emails from uh, um, very big uh, professors from uh, europe and uk and also uh, from uh, students who are willing to join the, my group as a phd scholar so they all uh, were uh, praising and uh, congratulating and for the same so many things i have done and uh, they also pointed out that uh, using words such as the uh, brain orgasm in uh, personal web page that is meant for viewing by others is not good and uh, that also uh, actually helped me to get some good connections with uh, uh, big professors in europe but uh, what i'm trying to say here is that uh, personal even the personal web pages are one playground where we get to do everything Uh, what we want in the ways we want uh, we should uh, keep one thing in mind that it is not for our own use or it is not for our own viewing it is the place where people get to know about you so they should not mistaken you by just having a look at your website so i think the next speaker will uh, elaborate uh, more about that and uh, there comes blogging and social networking which uh, professor sudhakar puchimuthu have um, explained very clearly because this is uh, the 90% uh, of what you can do about uh, making your research profile more visible to others recently we have any social uh, networking platform like professor sudhakar pichamuth introduced and you also you all also know that there is facebook twitter linkedin and um, what else uh, what not there are many and uh, sharing your work and talking about your work there is also very important in order to sell your products because uh, my um, uh, phd mentor used to say that uh, whatever the research what we do in laboratory is like uh, growing a vegetable in a farm so when your uh, vegetable is ready to harvest and ready to be uh, sold in a market what we have to do is that we have to uh, get, harvest the vegetable go to the market stand in a corner and uh, shout out loud that we have Uh, certain vegetables to sell so it, it is exactly the same so you know you are doing better research and people around you know that you are uh, doing better research but unless 
you shout your research out loud on social media you will never be known you will never uh, come in limelight uh, but uh, for an early career researcher uh, becoming uh, a known person is very important because i i personally can uh, can, can um, see the differences uh, i have um, um, gone through before i started uh, posting my works at, uh, actively in social medias and uh, after i started doing that uh, because uh, I, i these days i am getting uh, many invitations from high impact journals for a contribution and uh, many invitation to special edit some thematic issues all this happens because i am talking about my work out loud in the social media and uh, professor sudhakar is also uh, was also mentioning about algorithmic score because now uh, the journal papers whatever you publish does not only include your uh, readers count or uh, pdf uh, how many pdfs were downloaded how many copies of pdfs were downloaded and the citation number now there is algorithmic score so which means that uh, how how uh, impactful is your work in grabbing the attention of the general public through social media and various other platform so that is very very important in order to make uh, you and your research visible to many uh, in the general public policy makers and um, funding agencies there are so many other uh, uh, set of people or society of people who must know about you and your research work that will is your uh, journey in this uh, field of academy and research and um, uh, i i wanted to say about um, Uh, one more thing uh, how alt metrics yeah the, yeah uh, i have I just remembered that um, recently i have applied for an early career uh, scientist uh, project early career scientist project in jsps and uh, I, my first application was uh, denied or rejected uh, my second was actually accepted because i made a press release like uh, uh, professor sudhakar's anti cancer and nanoparticle from tea leaves i made a press release about uh, a recent alternative method i developed for uh, accurately measuring the electrocatalytic activity and i did not uh, know that uh, that will be grabbed by many news agency and uh, it ultimately uh, was uh, uh, it ultimately became a, a talk across the nation in japan so the next time i applied for the funding uh, with the same proposal with some minor modification i got it it is because i was made uh, visible because of the press release i made so blogging social networking press release these things are very important uh, in order to bring out you and your research work to the uh, light limelight so where uh, when you get noticed your research get noticed and your uh, journey through academia and research is uh, east so that is very important yeah and then uh, there is outreaching and disseminating this is also uh, very important uh, because unless you show how your works are useful to the general public and uh, society you will never convince the funding agency to fund your research right so that we can do only through outreaching and disseminating previously in uh, old days where there was no uh, internet and uh, so uh, like professor sudhakar uh, introduced you can create your own youtube channel and uh, you, you can uh, start talking about your uh, research work whatever you are doing in a weekly basis and there is also outreaching there are uh, people particularly early career researchers those who have uh, just started uh, working on your field and they also don't know anything like you were Uh, not knowing anything in the beginning so they all need our help so there we can give them uh, helping and through uh, many uh, ways like conducting a discussion uh, series which i am doing very recently for uh, speaking electrochemistry with early career researcher all these things can make you visible more and more to the general public as well as to the funding bodies and policy makers and uh, uh, the people who have already achieved in this area i mean in academy and research yeah so making press release is very important this is uh, the effect of press release i made for my own article as you can see the altimetric score went up to 77 and uh, it is still uh, the number one ranked uh, article published recently in uh, the journal of electrochemical society so 
when you uh, make press release with your university you are literally uh, showing off your uh, research and uh, you yourself to the general public these are the things and these are the ways by which you can make you and your research profile more visible to the people yes that's it thank you